after that cybersecurity hearing all about Russian hacking and the larger question of the failure of U.S. defenses against cyber attacks coming up at the Armed Services Committee today. Joining me now, Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff for Leon Panetta, when Panetta served first as CIA director under President Obama, then as defense secretary. So the issue of cybersecurity, I remember Leon Panetta when he came in to CIA saying that was going to be one of his major focuses. And all these years later, we are told by the spy chiefs and by all of their critics on the Hill today that we still do not have American defenses adequate to counteract China when they go after our, you know, 20, more than 20 million uh, job applicants and uh, people who've gone through security clearances here in the States. And also, of course, the Russian attacks, attacks from North Korea. Well, Secretary Panetta actually began warning the public about this in a very public way in 2012 when Iran launched those denial of service attacks against American banks in response to our international sanctions on Iran's nuclear program. And so we saw Iranian attacks against Wall Street. We saw that attack by North Korea against Sony. We saw China attack the Office of Personal Management. We've seen now Russia try to hack into our election processes. This is something. And also Russia attacking the State Department, the White House. I mean, State Department computers had to be taken down down for a month in 2015. And trying very aggressively to infiltrate Pentagon networks and even classified networks. And so this is something that our entire government's been grappling with. And I think actually, Andrew, we need to learn a little bit more from the private sector because after all, most businesses, most companies are, all, are also the target. They're on the front lines of cyber attacks and hacks, people trying to steal their data, steal their intellectual property. And so we've got to do a much better job working with Silicon Valley, working with technology companies here in this area to try to figure figure out how to make these defenses stronger for our government. Jeremy, I was really struck today when uh, the DNI clapper said that one of the impediments to striking back is that to engage in a cyber attack against Russia, for instance, you have to go in through another country, and that's a violation of international law. Are those kinds of legal prohibitions observed here in the U.S. and not in Russia. Are we, are, are we fighting with one hand or two hands tied behind our back? for very good legal reasons, perhaps. In some respects, yes. I think it's accurate to say the Russians do not respect international rules of law, international rules of warfare, and they will attack us, and they have attacked us, and they'll continue to do so. And our lawyers tend to debate these things, and they wrangle, and they have long meetings about it. And I think we probably have to do a reset, a reassessment of what our capabilities are, what our legal authorities are, because we're going to have to take the fight to our adversaries in the cyber domain. That's clear. We have to elevate Cyber Command, the element out at Fort Meade by the NSA that actually is responsible for our cyber military operations. We'll have to elevate, that, elevate them to a full military command. We'll have to get the intelligence community, the Defense Department, and our entire federal government really to upgrade their cyber defenses. And this doesn't just affect the Pentagon. This also affects the Department of Homeland Security. It affects the IRS, because after all, they've got all of our personal financial information. It affects health care agencies, because they have our personal health data. So this is something where we really have to up our game. Lindsey Graham said today that in our response to Russia, we threw pebbles with the actions last week. We need to start throwing stones. Are we ready to throw stones? And would you agree that they were pebbles? Well, no, I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. The action that the administration took last Thursday was pretty significant. We declared persona non grata, 35 intelligence officers and their families kicked him out, said you got to be out of here by Sunday at noon. We closed two intelligence facilities. We sanctioned the Russian successor organizations to the KGB, sanctioned their top officials, and we took a number of other steps, including releasing the specific internet codes that the Russians used used to hack our election processes, gave those out to the private sector so they could build their own defensive systems. I think we did a lot. We'll have to do more. We'll have to deter this if we can figure out a way to do that. But we'll have to not just focus on Russia. And this is, I think, the key point for the president-elect and his team, which is when he raises his right hand and becomes president two Fridays Not from very now, far from here. Not right very far steps. from, just about 200 yards from here. He is going to become the number one cyber target in the world from Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and terrorists. And it's going to be his responsibility to rely on the intelligence professionals that he's been denigrating and dissing and actually bring them into the fight, empower them, build their morale, give them capability, and make them part of his team because they, after all, after all are his troops in this fight and really help them, help him defend our country. 
how damaging to morale are his criticisms? It's pretty unbelievable, Andrea. I mean, I've been talking uh, all week and in particular yesterday and today to uniformed military officials and those intelligence professionals who operate in the shadows, some who are operating in some very dangerous and tricky situations even at this hour in some austere corners of the globe. And they've, I think, been hurt personally by the comments that have come out. They. They don't want praise, they don't need praise, but they also want to know that their conversations with their president are going to be behind closed doors, that if the president wants to challenge them, he will do so in a respectful and presidential and professional way, behind closed doors, in the situation room, not out in social media, and not in a way that actually makes Julian Assange seem more credible than our own patriots. That's kind of a ridiculous paradigm, and it's something I think we have to get right. Jeremy Bash, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.